So adding text animation is one of the easiest ways to keep viewer retention or just emphasize a point that you're making. Today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover some of the basics of kinetic typography in DaVinci Resolve to show you how to become a better texter. Feel free to skip to whatever section you want to and let's get into it. All right, so I got DaVinci opened and just a forward or forewarning, I operate in the 60 frame per second world if you normally work in 30 FPS or 24 FPS. When I start talking about keyframes and timing things out, what you might need to do is scale things to match your frame rate or even just use your best judgment to figure out what feels or looks best for you. All right, so to get started, I'm going to go over to my effects library. I'm going to go over to my titles and I want to make sure I drop in a text plus node. We don't want the text node, we want text plus node. The text node will limit your options and abilities for things that you can do. Text plus is what we want. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and choose a font that I like. I've been using this one called Chunk 5 recently. I really like the way that looks. All right, so the first animation that we're gonna do, we're gonna call our, our pop animation. It's the one that you normally will see on short form videos or any kind of subtitling. And essentially what the text is gonna do is pop on screen. All right, so what I'm gonna recommend before we start animating this is to start with the size that you'd like it to end at because essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna change it from the starting size. So you don't wanna have to refigure out the size and position that you'd like. Starting on the first frame of your text node, go over to the inspector tab, look for the size property and keyframe that property. Now what I'm gonna do is go forward, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames, set another keyframe, one, two, three, four more frames forward, set another keyframe. So you'll see that I'm on the 12th frame over here in our uh, our timestamp and our time code. And again, this will be the last time I say it, but how many frames you go with and where you position them, it's completely up to you. This is just how I tend to go about doing this. Now, the next step that I'm gonna take is I'm gonna go over to where we keyframe the size and you'll notice that there's a little left arrow here and that'll let you navigate back and forth between where you've keyframed this property. So I'm gonna go back to the beginning and I'm gonna decrease the size I don't know, to maybe half-ish. And then I'm gonna go to the right and I'm gonna increase the size just a little bit. I wouldn't recommend making this too big because essentially all we want is the text to appear on screen and then have a slight fall back into place. Now, if I go back to our starting frame and I play this, you'll see we have a little pop. This is a great starting point. Let's make it better. In order to improve the animations that we're gonna be doing, we are going to use the fusion page. I don't like it. Now, if you didn't already know this, you can edit your text plus nodes in the fusion page. You can either right click and hit open a fusion page, or if the layer is on top, just tab over to the fusion page and you'll see we have our template node right here. All right, and we have our text node here. So again, if I play this from the beginning, you'll see we have our little pop. We're gonna do two small things to smooth this out first. Go up top and find your spline option. Make sure the window isn't ginormous. And you'll see that we have an option here for our keyframe property, and that's the text size. Go ahead and click that. If you don't see the keyframes in your window, find the zoom to fit option, select that guy, and you can see our frames. Now you can either drag and select all of them, or you can hit control plus A, which will select them. And then what I'm gonna do is hit the S button and that'll smooth out our keyframes. If you don't wanna hit S, there is the smooth button down here. Another option for doing this is if you have all of your keyframes selected again, right click, go to the ease menu, and then it'll give you a bunch of options for how it smooths out the graph. So I could do in out cubic, and that gives us a similar result. But now when I go ahead and play this back, the change is gonna be subtle, but it'll look a little bit smoother. Okay, the last step that I'm gonna take is I'm gonna go over to the inspector tab, settings, and we're gonna turn on motion blur. Now, I normally don't turn on motion blur until I finish setting everything up that I want to, just because adding motion blur in general is pretty resource heavy. It's up to you if you wanna increase the quality. I normally go up to like, I don't know, seven or eight, just cause it I feel like it looks better. And there you go. Real quick, before I forget, if you feel like this animation is happening too quickly, all you need to do in the Fusion page is again, select all your keyframes and then there's an option down here called the time stretch option. Go ahead and select that and then I can drag out 
the right handle, you'll see that it keeps the relationship of the keyframes while proportionally stretching them out or condensing them in time. So again, if I play this back, you'll see the animation is just a little bit slower. And if you don't wanna set this up again, I've actually made a video showing how you can save this as a preset in your title menu so that all you have to do is drag and drop it on screen and you'll have this animation ready to go. Alrighty, so the next text animation that we're gonna talk about is the text fly in, fly off, fly everywhere. It's another one that's pretty straightforward, but very useful. I'm gonna go ahead and reset my size property over here. If you didn't already know, you can double click a property and it'll get rid of any of the keyframes you have associated with it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop back in the Fusion page because we are not scared of the Fusion page. Say it with me. I'm not scared of the Fusion page. Okay. So we're back in the Fusion. You'll see that in our spline window, we no longer have any keyframed properties. I'm gonna go over to the Inspector tab and I'm gonna go to the Layout tab. And the property that we're gonna be changing is the Text Center. So what I'm gonna do again is go back to our first frame and I'm gonna go forward, uh, I don't know, 15 frames and keyframe that again. I'm gonna go back to our first frame and I think I'm gonna have our text come in from the bottom. So you can either do this in the preview window or you can go to your properties and all I'm gonna do is drag it down so that it is no longer on frame. And now if I play this back, you'll see it slides on screen. But we can make this even better and we're gonna do it the exact same way. Spline window, zoom to fit. Control A, and this time I'm gonna use our ease in menu and let's get crazy with it. Right click, ease, uh, let's go in quadratic. I mean, would you look at that? And what this looks like is it will gradually accelerate to the end point, which is what it does. And if you don't like that, maybe we can go ease in out cubic. It's kind of fun, it's got a nice little deceleration at the top. Now this slides on screen from the bottom and let's say I want it to fly off screen after a couple seconds from the top, or excuse me, to the top. So I'm gonna go a second or so ahead. And again, I'm going to go over to our center property and add a keyframe and then let's go yay ahead and add another keyframe. And on this ending keyframe, I'm going to drag it up off screen. Now, if we play this back, slide on screen and then slide up off screen. There's a couple of things that we can do to make this better or feel a little bit more natural. In this middle section here, it feels pretty stagnant. The text isn't doing anything, it's just kind of there. So what if instead of it just sitting here, we have it slowly slide up as time passes? So I'm gonna go over to our second from the end keyframe and just drag it up a little. So now when I play this back, it's gonna look something like that. All right, so let's smooth out our ending two keyframes here. If you need help navigating this window, Control plus the scroll wheel will zoom in and out. Alt plus the scroll wheel will move you left and right. You can hold and drag with your left mouse button on either of the axes to change the scale of it. I'm gonna go ahead and isolate these two keyframes. And what I'm gonna do is after I've selected the two of them, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go to ease, and then the one I'm looking for is back in cubic. And you'll see that our animation actually goes in the opposite direction before going to our end point. And this is what that looks like. I personally like this because you get a little elasticity in the effect, but in its current stage, I feel like it's a little too abrupt. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select our ending keyframe, and I'm gonna hold down the shift button and then drag it to the right. And then I'm gonna grab our handle here. And by holding down the alt key, when I drag the spline handle, it'll keep the angle of the handle itself. So I want something that's kind of like in there. Now let's see how this looks better, but I still think it's a little bit too fast. So I'm gonna select our two ending keyframes, go to my time stretcher tool, and then I'm just gonna drag this out just a few more. All right, let's see how that looks. Good, I, 
that's pretty good. And just a quick reminder, I do already have motion blur turned on from our previous example. But yeah, I'm happy with that. That looks pretty good. Now you can combine this with other properties like the rotation or moving in both the X and the Y. And you can come up with some really unique and interesting ways for your text to slide on screen. Animating text and subtitles is a question I get a lot. So I hope this was useful to you guys. And again, there will be a link or something here to figure out how to save these for future use. Appreciate you guys. Peace.